Alright guys, it's Stephen here, back with another video. Hope you're all alright, uh, and ready for some of the big Manchester City news. Uh, carrying on this kind of daily news thing that we've been trying on this channel. Um, I took a weekend off, but I did do two videos before that, so I am kind of carrying on. For, so, you know, is that three days in, three videos in five days, so that's better than it was, isn't it? Anyway, uh, today we're going to carry on talking about Manchester City news. I hope you're all feeling good. Um, hope you're all safe and healthy, and you've had a good weekend and all that kind of stuff. Uh, also, quickly, I want to say, go subscribe to VGC, by the way. There'll be a link on screen, which is a new channel I'm presenting for, which is a video games channel uh, where I report the news in a different style to this one but go and subscribe to it if you are a games fan but today we're going to talk about some big news from uh, the world of Manchester City and mainly we're going to start with this one Project Restart now um, it looks like it's going to be crawling closer to a reality now if you've been missing football in the way that a lot of people have this is good news for you um if you're morally torn on this, this is probably well, it's a bit of good news and a bit of bad news. And if you're repulsed by the idea of football coming back, then this is probably just bad news, really. Um, I'm kind of, I, I don't really know what I'm thinking, but all I know at the moment is that um, the Premier League is edging closer and closer to reality. Um, it looks like basically the players are going to be back in training as of tomorrow. Now, that was the breaking news earlier on today. Uh, City are set to uh, resume training on Tuesday afternoon. Apparently there was a Premier League vote uh, and they all agreed and now it's kind of been unanimously agreed and the clubs are back in training. Uh, and today there was photos going around social media of the players turning up in their cars um, for tests. The, the older players turned up at separate 15 minute intervals. Um, it took about three hours allegedly to test them all. Interestingly, Mendy was sat next to someone in the car like you... <laughs> You'd think he'd be in the back seat, wouldn't you? Doing what he can. But I don't know why he would be driven there, but you know, that's Mendy in a nutshell. Not that I'm saying there are reasons for that, who knows? But either way, all the players were turning up today ahead of training tomorrow, um, which is interesting. It does look like the um the Premier League will be completed. Uh if I'm being honest, I always I've always been fine with the idea of the Premier League was resuming only when it's safe. I didn't really ever see the point. I mean, maybe I did, I can't remember, but I feel at the moment my head is at the point where I didn't really see the point of voiding it right now. I just don't think we should play until it's safe. That's the difference. Uh, that's the difference, really. I'm not asked what they play, be it this season or next season, you know, when it gets to that point, as long as it's safe. I've never been against, like, writing a season off. One thing I will say, though, is that this season isn't going to be... Um, deemed a fair season for anyone it, there is going to be a big asterisk I know Liverpool have deserved the league and I do think they have done well done but there will be a big asterisk next to it unfortunately Liverpool fans um, unfortunately mm -hmm. for everyone because uh, the rules of this season are going to change uh, three quarters of the way through it's going to be weird uh, it's, but it's going to happen um, it's almost certainly going to happen now like many of you I did watch a bit of the Bundesliga at the weekend I managed about 55 minutes of the Dortmund game it felt very strange at first um, but I think the Premier League officials would have been watching that thinking well if it works for them uh, great because then we can get going again the eyes of the world were on that game, those games uh, and largely they went pretty well I would say they were obviously a bit weird and a lot of people disliked it and I get that but largely I would say um, most people deep down were probably happy to see football back a lot of people didn't like it and to be honest I didn't like a lot of it but you did you did get used to it I did notice I did get used to it now there was no emotional attachment to Dortmund for me what I watched so I didn't really care too much I wasn't sure if my decent my uh this is a lack of attachment to it came from emotional reasons or because of the fact that they're playing with our fans. But what I will say is that, I mean, if you've anything like me and you've watched plenty of academy football, you do get used to watching games of football in basically empty stadiums. I've seen uh, City's uh, academy sides play uh, in front of about two, 300 people at the Etihad Stadium, you know, so you kind of get used to watching football in empty stadiums in that general in that general vibe. So I kind of did get used to it eventually. Um, it was weird. Um but it's going to happen. Uh, it's going to happen whether we like it or not. I am a little bit repulsed by the idea of football coming back when there's loads of deaths. But it is where it is, and I think it's going to happen, unfortunately. Now, only, only uh, the only thing I would say is hopefully all these testing and all that kind of stuff can keep people that are more at risk uh, safe. Footballers, likely, statistically speaking, should be okay. They are the fittest of the fittest in our society. They, they will most likely be okay, touch wood. Um, but you worry about the cameramen, uh, the officials, um, maybe some of the older coaches. Like, and apparently Roy Hodgson was pushing a lot for this. But Roy, you're like, you're one of the ones who are vulnerable. You're literally a 70 year old bloke. I know you're more healthy than most 70 year old blokes, probably. But come on, Roy, be sensible. Um, but it is probably going to happen. So it looks very likely that we'll be seeing football uh, at some point. It's probably going to be in June, isn't it? Um, the players are training. But I would say they'd probably train for the next four weeks or so. And then I reckon, uh, you know, mid-June, we're going to see some games. And it'll be interesting. Um, 
I'll be making videos, of course. I'll be talking about football. Uh, and it's going to be very, very weird. It's going to be surreal. But it is what it is. I mean, I personally prefer the idea of football coming back much more than the alternative, which is just cancel everything. Like, I saw Celtic today were awarded the, uh, the SPL title, the Scottish Premier League title, by a tweet, basically. Like, Celtic just tweeted out, like, oh, we're champions. That's shite. That's absolute shite. I'm sorry. It's not Celtic's fault, of course, and it's not anyone anyone's fault in the league in terms of what happened and why it's come to this. But the idea of football being decided by just a tweet, essentially, or just a, a press release. It's like, press release, this has happened. It may as well just be a football manager simulation. Like, it's it seems cold. It seems emotionless, and it just doesn't appeal to me at all. So I, I know this is not a popular opinion because a lot of City fans want it voided, but I'd rather have football carry on, but only when it's safe. Because I, I I don't think there's any fairer way to do it, personally. Uh, I know that means Liverpool win the league, but I accepted that a long time ago, and I'm mature enough to accept that. Uh, but football coming back, let us know what you think about that in the comments. There's some weird rumours today, by the way, about Leroy Sane. Uh, apparently, yesterday and today, he was interested... No, sorry, Liverpool were interested in Leroy Sane on a free transfer. Apparently, they told him not to go to Bayern, hold out for a year, and they'll get him on a free. Um, thankfully, that seems like absolute tosh. Uh, I think that came from a, a German newspaper. Um, according to the sources... Uh, the winger doesn't want to go to a Premier League rival and rather go to Bayern Munich. Um, that's good. I mean, I, I I can understand if he leaves and I would be pissed off if he leaves, but I could eventually forgive him. You know, he's a German lad going to Bayern. That's not unheard of, you know. But if he went to Liverpool on a free transfer, I would be fuming with the guy. Absolutely fuming because that would just piss the hell off me off because why wouldn't it? But thankfully, um, he looks like he's... Well, I say thankfully, he will be going to Liverpool and thankfully he might be leaving to another, another club, which is not good at all. But, you know, it's better than the alternative. Uh, so that's a weird one. I still think signing will go. There's been no real updates of any note, I would say, on that, but it will come in time. And finally, on this day, I just wanted to talk about this day a year ago because how is that a year ago already? How is the event of a year ago that long ago? Because... We became, we became the formidables. Uh, I know a lot of people hate that tag, but Manchester City completed a domestic quadruple, a domestic treble, important trophies, then the Community Shield as well. We beat uh, Watford 6-0 in the FA Cup final, and we spanked them. Uh, and I felt sorry for Watford, actually, but City were phenomenal that day. Uh, and it was a phenomenal end to a phenomenal season as well. I was looking at the stats before, and thanks to City Extra for putting these stats on a tweet. 61 games and 52 wins in a season 52 wins out of 61 I mean this is just unheard of I think we know how lucky we are in general but when I was a young lad growing up and watching Manchester City um, struggle I guess struggle is the only way I can put it getting relegated and all that kind of stuff despite often having a team sometimes too good for the level they're at like I mean some of the teams we had in the old division one which is now the championship were not were, they were better than being relegated they really were but watching Manchester City then toil and be as limp and as pathetic as they were at times um I never expected to see Manchester City become what they were. And last season, um, the the balls on that team, the quality on that team, it really is a golden era for this club. And I don't really care how we got there. A lot of people go, you only got there because of money, which is it's probably true, let's be honest. We got there by money, but it doesn't really change anything. Um, we became the first English side to win 50 matches in across all competitions in one season. That is just an astonishing accomplishment. Uh, 169 goals scored in 61 games, just under... Uh, one goal, uh, three goals a game. That would have been 182 to get three goals every game. Um, 180, sorry, it would have been 183. Uh, and we got 169 goals. Uh, but that's a phenomenal, phenomenal amount of goals to score. Um, it's crazy and to think we scored nine goals at home in one season under Stuart Pearce and we're getting 169 now. Um, it's just a special, a special team. Vincent Company also announced his departure. This time last year, Vinny, I still miss you. Vinny, there is still a massive Manchester City. Uh, so there's a company shaped hole in that team um, and on that bench and around the squad and the dressing room. Um, and do you know what? I would have loved to hear companies just takes on everything at the moment. You know, Vinny's um, an intelligent, statesman-like person and having him around as a calm head would have been great drawing all this because he's an actual leader. And I tell you what, the Premier League would have been better for these discussions with players with someone as level-headed, as articulate, uh, as considered as Vincent Company, um, it, it really is a loss to the game he, that he's not involved at the moment in England. Um, but yeah, a year ago today, City did something pretty special. Um, and we won't win the league this year, but we've already won one tournament. Who knows, we could win the FA Cup, maybe the Champions League again. Uh, we forget how good this team is. Uh, football, when you step away from it, you get a time to think uh, how lucky we've been. And I know it's been weird winning a football, but I do feel genuinely lucky. I'm watching Manchester City these days. Um, I feel like I'm appreciating greatness. Um, 
and it's good, isn't it? So when football comes back and it won't be the same, it'll be it'll be slower, I reckon. It'll be weirder. The emotion will be gone. Um, I will look at some of these players and go, oh, God, it's good to see him back, um, even if I'm morally torn. And you're fine to be morally torn, by the way. Um, people are dying, you know. Uh, a lot of people, like myself included, hate the idea of football coming back, but a small percentage of me knows that as soon as it's there, I'll be watching it because... Because why won't we? We're only human after all. We love this club. So it'd be interesting. Guys, do let us know in the comments what you think of the idea of Project Restart. Um, are you for it? Are you against it? What do you reckon of the Sarni rumours? And how good was last year? How good was last year? Uh, this day last year? On this day last year? Um, just special. For now, like, comment, subscribe. Go watch some of the other videos if you want. Let me know what you want me to talk about tomorrow. And I hope you're enjoying these daily updates. And go and subscribe to BGC. It'll be on the screen right now somewhere. And I'll see you tomorrow.